a private detective leans over a small screen, dispassionately watching the lovers lie naked on a hotel bed, recording the scene for a client. He sighed as he watched the impending end of the marriage. All these years, I can't understand why a woman who has everything would want to ruin her own life like that. For God's sake, she's just a stupid bitch. He leaned back in his chair and typed a message on his phone. Just one word. Traitor clicked submit, and it was done. He stared at the screen, waiting for the next action that he knew was about to happen. He was instructed to continue recording until signaled to stop. He knew that the woman's husband was about to enter the room. It wasn't the best decision, but he was assured that there would be no violence unless the bastard attacked. In this case, the husband will defend himself. It was a risk, and he knew it, but he kept a record, and there was a copy for him too if he needed it for any reason. Quickly, less than a minute later, there was a knock on the door of the room with the lovers stretched naked on the bed. Room service, the man sighed, but got out of bed and, wrapped in a robe, threw the blanket over his lying lover. The detective watched him approach the door. Showtime, he thought to himself. The man opened the door. The detective heard a muffled conversation. He knew what they were talking about. The client outlined to him the expected course of events. But he was concerned about the husband's reaction when he came face to face with the man who had cuckolded him. The detective hoped his colleague would be a moderating influence, but he was still nervous. The woman suddenly sat up in bed, wrapping herself in a blanket. It was clear from her body language that something was wrong as she crept along the bed, away from the door. The lover came into view, slowly backing towards the bed, and when his feet touched the edge of the bed, he leaned back and stretched out next to his lover, who by this time began to cower in despair and repeat over and over again. No, 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 this can't be, no, please, no. That's when he saw the gun in his husband's hands. Crap! He was too far away to stop what was happening now. He was helpless. Don't fucking do it, man. Just don't fucking do it. He thought about his colleague. Where the hell was he? The action in the hotel room was frozen, the conversation was muffled, but the woman was now openly crying. The lover sat with his hands raised in surrender as the client stood in front of them. He listened. Okay, bitch. First of all, we're done, finito caput. Do you understand me? No, no, it's not what it seems. Shut up. She cringed, shrinking away from him. She had never seen him like this before. On the other hand, how many times had her husband caught her in bed with another guy before? His eyes bore into her as she sat wrapped in the hotel blanket. Her lover became bolder for a split second and made a mad movement towards her husband. The husband, who was praying for any justification, immediately hit him on the head with the barrel of a pistol. The satisfying crack brought a grim smile to the husband's face. The woman saw this and shuddered. Her scream tensed her husband. He pointed the gun at her head, his eyes wild. Listen to me. I already have everything I need to divorce your ass and ruin that bastard. The only thing I haven't taken care of yet is a damn good thrashing for you two. Just don't give me any more reason. Sit calmly and silently. He paused, as if trying to calm himself. I am not prone to violence. He smiled, waving the pistol in front of the lovers. In any case, I decided that you both will pay and pay dearly for treason. You will never return to the house. You have nothing to do there. And I don't need you anymore. All your things, whatever they may be, are already packed and on their way to your sister. You have no money, no credit cards, nothing. Is it clear? The woman simply looked at him, stunned. Got it, bitch. He swung the pistol again. Um, yes, I understand. But what about... She began... I don't need your questions. I'll decide what you need to know. Is it clear? She nodded slowly, although at that moment everything in her head was mixed up. She was in shock. By the way, the children are fine. Thank you for asking. They already know what a traitor their mother is, so don't expect any sympathy from them. If I were you, I'd give them a few years to settle down. They were pretty upset when they discovered you and that idiot had sex in our bedroom a few weeks ago. Yes, dear Rebecca. They saw and heard you. 
What I cannot and will not forgive is your complete disrespect for our marriage and our children. She gasped, a sob escaping her throat as she brought her hand to her mouth. She had no idea that the children knew. This realization made her think feverishly, remembering how her lover had snuck into her home and they had ended up in bed for almost the entire day. She didn't see her children that day, didn't see them stay out late, and then come home looking sullen and withdrawn. She also didn't notice how thoughtful and upset her husband was because she was too busy scheming and thinking about herself and her lover. He stared at her, letting the words sink into her mind. Oh, did I mention that the bastard's wife knows everything about you two, too? Well, this will be a pleasant surprise that you can present to your lover when he comes to his senses. We use the same legal team for our divorces, still a savings. She gasped again as a groan from the floor signaled her lover coming to his senses. Well, why don't you help him? After all, you're in some shit together. Maybe you can work something out. He laughed. The person watching the screen breathed a sigh of relief. Even from here, it was clear that his anger was under control. That is, unless the bastard opens his mouth and says something stupid. On the screen, the husband looked at the camera and smiled. This was a signal. Back to the script, thank God for that. The detective thought. The text message was sent again, and he leaned back in his chair and sighed in relief as he looked at the screen. There was a knock on the door of the room, and a man came in, wearing a long coat and a felt hat, and holding two large envelopes in his hand. He was the first to approach the woman. Are you Rebecca Poulson? She nodded sadly before muttering, Yes, it is. Thank you, ma'am. You've been served. He turned to her lover, who had managed to sit on the edge of the bed and was now rubbing his head. Excuse me, sir. Are you Jonathan Green? He nodded. Yes, damn it, it's me. They gave it to you, Mr. Bastard. The messenger turned and disappeared in a matter of seconds. Steve Polson looked into Jonathan Green's eyes, and Jonathan Green felt hatred. He flinched trying to look away from those gray eyes. They reminded him of a wolf. By the time you realize this, your life will already fall apart. You'll get what you deserve from your wife. But I'll get mine soon, buddy. Your wife doesn't want you at home. She's taken her kids to her parents, and as you know, her dad has the resources to really ruin your life. So, buddy, I don't need to serve time for you. I'll leave you now. I wish you a good life, and I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about, so I'll leave you lovebirds alone. With these words, he turned and left the room. The lovers sat on the bed, staring at the envelopes, wondering what the hell just happened. The person watching the screen let out a huge sigh of relief, but continued to watch. Jonathan Green took out his cell phone and called his wife. It didn't go too well. Rebecca Polson, sitting in an almost catatonic state, could hear a sarcastic female voice. Jonathan threw his phone across the room as he began to realize that the consequences had already begun. He yelled at Rebecca Poulsen, who started yelling back at him. The screen showed how they took out their anger on each other for the collapse of their lives. The detective stood up and refreshed his scotch with ice as the scene continued to play out on the screen. Oh my God, what a fucking day. Another happy couple hits the road. He drained his glass in one gulp. Observing scene as such as this had been a major part of his business for recent years and his reputation as a getter of cheating spouses was well known. He was the best, but he himself couldn't get used to celebrating the breakup of someone else's marriage. Scenes from his own experience when he discovered his wife with his brother began to replay in his mind. He poured himself another, remembering that this too had ended badly. He had not spoken to his brother since that day. His wife tried to pass it off as a one-time thing. It was just sex and blah, blah, blah. He had heard all this so many times over the years since then. He couldn't get past it, forgive her, or forget. He just left and divorced her. Did he do the right thing? Hell yes. But damn, it hurt like hell, and it still hurt. Even 15 years later, it still hurt. He knew how Steve Polson would feel when he woke up alone in the morning. While the chase was going on, this distracted the pursuer from the real pain of loneliness. He turned and looked at the screen. The woman was alone, lying on the bed and sobbing. You stupid bitch, 
If you cared at all, you would have asked yourself why, why, why. Now your pain is just beginning. He reached out, turned off the connection, and began to close everything. His mobile phone rang. He opened it and asked, Steve, are you okay? You made me worry a little. Yes, I have everything written down and will be ready for you tomorrow. See you bye. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one. Listening to the next one.